I'm Sam, and this is my dad, Joe. Say hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. And together, we took this pile of pre-cut lumber from a DIY shed kit and turned it into a fully functioning 12 by 12 shed and workshop, also known as my shed shop. Together, we'll show you how tangible it is to create a workshop in your very own backyard as well. Welcome to my Shed Shop series. This series is sponsored by my amazing friends at The Home Depot. Over the summer, my parents found their dream home, which meant that they had to sell our childhood home, which sold in two weeks after being on the market, which also meant that my workshop sold in two weeks of being on the market as it was in a small shed in their backyard. So in order to help me get back on my feet, my amazing friends at the Home Depot decided to partner with my dad and I to offer us a DIY shed kit to build a brand new workshop in their new backyard. And since we're allowed up to 144 square feet without a permit, we decided to go for this Handy Home Products 12 by 12 wood storage shed. That's it right there. That's my new workshop. Guys, they're here. So all of the pre-cut pieces to the shed that I'm building for my new workshop were just delivered. We just finished offloading everything. I'm just going to do some organizing. I can't wait. It's pretty much the understatement of the century to say that Home Depot could not have made delivery of this DIY shed kit any easier. Essentially, they sent a box truck to my parents' house and then offloaded all of the pre-cut pieces for the DIY shed kit along with an instruction manual. At this point, I then organized everything and my dad and I took some time to survey the land to figure out where we were going to build the shed. After deciding on a spot behind his garage, we then took some time to clear the land to prep for the actual build. As we clear the land, let's talk game plan. So where we live, we cannot build anything on a concrete pad without applying for an extension permit. So we opted to build our shed on concrete blocks. Also, this particular shed came with a optional floor plan that recommended using pressure treated two by fours at 16 inches on center, but we upgraded those two by fours to pressure treated two by sixes and added some extra bridging for floor support. My recommendation for anyone looking to build their own shed would be to check with local code about what you can do in your own backyard because this will dictate the build. In order to begin laying out the concrete blocks and the floor plan, we first cut our outside 2x6s to build the frame. Next, we made sure that we were more than enough room away from our neighbor's property line as dictated by code and began to lay out all of the cement blocks. Once the blocks were ready and we double and triple checked that we were far enough away from the property line, I used a shovel to just begin to dig out an area around the block. In doing my research as to how much material I had to dig out from underneath the block, it was recommended that I leave enough room for about 4 inches of compacted gravel or crushed rock to go underneath the cement block. And the type of gravel or rock you use may differ based on what the ground is like underneath your cinder block, so make sure to do your research. Once all of the corner blocks were in place, we then added blocks in the center of every single outside frame as well. When taking into consideration how high we wanted the shed to sit off of the ground, it was recommended that we leave a minimum of six inches between the ground and the bottom of the lumber. This way we could add some crushed rock or gravel underneath to prevent any weeds from growing or a tree from making my workshop into a tree house and also stop any cute little critters from making a home underneath the shed. While we're killing time as I dig this hole and my dad is about to pour crushed rock and gravel into it, uh, I lost a lot of footage this summer in a big data loss and one of the things that I couldn't show and have to tell you about is that it's really important to make sure that everything is level, square, and even and that means just measuring from corner to corner, from end to end, and using a level to ensure that everything is where it needs to be. Bonus tip, you get extra brownie points if when everything is level that you break out into a happy dance. Once the frame pieces were level and squared up, we just double checked to make sure that everything was kosher and used decking screws to attach the frame pieces together. We won't be using decking screws for the inside of the frame, but we'll walk you through that in a little bit. At this point, we checked for square for about the jillionth time and we were good. Following the frame build, it was time to measure and cut all of the joists and the bridging for the center of the frame, and this will be what supports our floor. 
We wanted to make sure that the foundation of the shed was really strong, so we attached the joists to the outside frame using joist hangers. We also made sure to use the recommended nails that came with the joist hangers, and we found both of these at our local Home Depot. At this point, while one person was working on hanging the joists, the other person was working on adding the rest of the concrete blocks underneath these joists so that everything was structurally sound. As we finish up attaching the joists to the frame, the next step is going to be the bridging. We decided to go for bridging instead of blocking because it allowed for a space at four feet for us to apply our plywood to. We attached all of the bridging the same way we attached the joists by using joist hangers to make sure everything was strong. Before completing the rest of the framing, we laid out a landscaping fabric underneath all of the joists. And at this point, we added some more crushed rock, not really for structural reasons, but more or less to keep weeds out, to stop things from growing, and to stop things from living underneath the shed. Once the foundation of the shed was done, we just cut and prepped exterior grade three quarter inch plywood for the floors. We then attach the plywood to the foundation of the shed with decking screws. That way, if we ever need to get underneath the shed for any reason whatsoever, we can unscrew these screws and have quick access to the bottom of the shed. After two days of work on the shed foundation and the floor in 90 plus degree weather, it was time to crack open a cold one and celebrate. If you enjoyed the first episode of my shed shop series, please make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for another episode next Sunday. I really hope you guys will continue to follow along on this journey because without you, this journey would not be possible. Thank you so much for your support and happy DIYing. I don't have to worry about filming that new shed build anymore because it uh, looks like we have a new cameraman that just walked on to set. Hey dude, what's up? He was just massaging my dad's shoulders and now he's filming our build.